This is a battle between two of the best um, competitive Total War Rome 2 players currently. It's Panda Warrior and someone you you will know him if you followed uh, tournaments. But if you if you're kind of new to competitive multiplayer, you might not have heard of Luelin of Agartha. But I assure you, he is one of the worst opponents you can come up against next to Panda Warrior if you're in a tournament. Very hard to beat. Very good understanding of the game. You'll see that he uses he, he well I'll just tell you when it happens but he, he uses some moves that are very very uh, effective devastating so in this battle we're watching it from Luelin's viewpoint uh, Luelin is commanding Tylus up against the boy eye and a lot of people think that the boy eye is the superior sword spamming faction in the game um, Luelin picking Tylus and going up against the boy eye and panda warrior picking picking the boy eye against Tylus is essentially it's an indication that they are fairly evenly matched. They are not completely evenly matched, as we'll see, but they are evenly matched with a few very important differences. I'll first go first go over the build of um, Luelin. He has three raiding horse, very good units, very annoying to face. He has two Celtic warriors on each flank, make that three Celtic warriors on each flank. He of course has the standard core of tribal warriors. Uh, he has an old sword unit. Uh, his general is also an Oathsorn, backed up by two Levy Freemen, and three Levy Freemen actually, uh, or one Spear Warrior, yep, one Spear Warrior in the center, a, guy, a Light Horse just for the hell of it, and for Panda, we have an Oathsorn general of course, we have Heavy Horse, three Heavy Horse, we have uh, <laughs> a bunch of Celtic Warriors and Levy Freemen. The main difference between these two armies is that Tylus has access to Raiding Horse. Um, Boy Eye has access to Heavy Horse. And the Tribal Warriors are going to go up against the the uh, Sword... The... Let's see... Where are they? The Sword Followers of the, the Boy Eye. So it could be interesting to take a look at the differences between these units before the... Because things are going to go very quickly here. You can see that they are... There are two rush builds going up against each other. So... We have Sword Followers with 39 melee attack and 40 weapon damage. The Tribal Warriors 30 and 40. So the Tribal Warriors are poorer uh, offensively. They have a charge bonus of 27 for the Sword Followers. A melee defense of 57. The charge bonus is 26 of the tribal warriors and the melee defense is 70. So these units are an interesting match because the sword followers are essentially a more offensive unit while the tribal warriors are your quintessential tanky unit. So the tribal warriors are going to do damage by being able to stay in the fight for a long time. The sword followers are going to do a lot of damage by hitting more and doing more damage that way. So an interesting matchup for sure. Uh, the armor, no contest, 75 versus uh, 20, w versus 95. The health is 60, and it's also 60 for the sword followers. So, But they have 20 less armor. The morale is 55, and it's 65 for the sword followers. So when things go sour, the sword followers are going to stay in the fight longer uh, than the tribal warriors. Unless there, of course, is the general is nearby. But for sure, an interesting matchup. Two spammy armies with uh, with light light spear support and light cavalry support, and this is essentially two meta builds coming coming up against each other. Go as cheaply as you can on the cavalry while still have still having an effective cavalry force. Bring cheap baiting melee units. Bring good mid tier swords, and bring some cavalry. And that's basically it. These armies are so, so similar. It's going to come down to how they use their armies and troop quality, basically. How they match the units up against each other. It's going to be extremely important. Because if the Celtic warriors, for example, go up against the tribal warriors, they will get smoked. Uh, the the mid-tiers are going to need to go up against each other. And that is going to... It's going to be a close, tough fight for both of the armies. And whichever player manages to have the best micro, deny the most charges, uh, be the most effective with the cavalry, is going to have a massive advantage. And already, 
Llewellyn has been doing damage to some of the units of Panda. Well, Panda hasn't really done any damage yet, but it's nothing major. It's just taking down a few Celtic warriors and such. No real damage done on the uh, Sword Follower core. And you can see here the engagement starts. We have Sword Followers coming up against Tribal Warriors. This engagement is going to be very interesting, but it is going to be affected by this unit getting hammered by Javelins as well. Very nice move here in kiting with the sword followers, charging with the heavy horse against the old sword, beautifully done by Panda. He's going to get counter charge, but then he's charging in with the sword followers. This is why I love this game competitively. Awesome displays of skills by both players here. Just those those tiny moves is are what separates the best players in the game for players that are just a few rungs below them. Getting a nice counter charge on the Celtic Warriors on the flanks. Levy Freeman going up against Levy Freeman. The unit that gets the charge is going to do better, obviously. Now we have Shield Wall going down. The Tribal Warriors are making ready to tank. And even if these units got hit a lot by Javelins, they're actually doing better. And Panda is doing something so smart here. He's pulling away while they are a Shield Wall and not being able to follow. Then he's counter charging with his Celtic Warriors. This is just beautiful. Beautiful gameplay by Panda Warrior. Lulena is holding a very strong left flank here. Panda hasn't been able to get into it very effectively. Panda is doing well over here, but he is up against very tanky units, doing a lot of damage to the Celtic Warriors with Axe Warriors. But the Axe Warriors should have been matched up against the Tribal Warriors to get through their massive armor. Here we have the Old Sworn General of, um, of Panda doing, uh, of Luelin, doing a lot of damage to the Levy Freeman, of course. Nice charge here by Light Horse into the Heavy Horse kind of stopping the effectiveness of their charge against the infantry but still the light horse is going to get smoked by heavy horse absolutely smoked they don't have a chance the raiding horse haven't uh, taken damage yet levy free men routing on the flanks for panda and this is pretty dangerous because now they'll be able to fire at this stationary unit of heavy horse do some damage it's just so equal in the center tribal warriors up against uh, sword followers celtic warriors moving into support uh, this engagement has gone on for the longest and the tribal warriors are tanking it out against the Celtic warriors But Panda was essentially getting two charges off on these tribal warriors by pulling out when they had shield wall Beautiful use against rush So there is definitely some skill involved in playing with rushes as well because how you use your units is just so important Here Panda warriors getting a nice charge off on the old Sworn general of Llewellyn but it is a sort of in a forest, so the charge is less effective than it would have been in the open. And the heavy horse is going to go down quickly. The general of Panda is pushing through here, wanting to get into the Celtic warriors. Ch changes his mind. The sword followers are going to go into the back of the tribal warriors. And to me, it looks like the, the uh, sword followers are getting the better of the engagements by a small margin. Very nicely done here by both players, charging in with the Oath Sorn against Tribal Warriors. The Tribal Warriors are going to go down quickly, even activating Headhunt. And the reason why he's activating Headhunt, this is not a mistake, this is by, because he has the Strategist General. He'll be able to use Second Wind and Battle Rhythm in order to keep these Oath Sorn fresh, essentially most of the battle. So this battle is still fairly even, but we have the very important cavalry of panda warrior getting defeated on the flanks and this is extremely bad he won't be able to do the rear charges he needs here lunin has been able to neutralize a lot of cavalry with this old sword unit there is cavalry free in the back lines of panda and this is the tipping point of the battle while the heavy horse of panda is off the field lunin still has three cavalry units this is very bad for panda warrior the Celtic Warriors and Sword Followers are not going to stand up to getting rear charged. The Oath Sword doing massive amounts of damage here. And the Levy Freeman and all the center of Panda is going to go down by rear charges. Lulin was essentially able to win this, I believe, by having more faster, uh, ha faster cavalry that could do damage from afar. W while getting, um, getting Panda Warriors cavalry tied down. And uh, this is not looking good for Panda here. Both generals are left on the field, both generals are doing fine, but Llewellyn having so much infantry left and these raiding horse, they're going to do so much damage in the late game. Awesome, awesome units. Heavy horse is also good, but while Panda Warrior displayed masterful use of his um, infantry here, uh, I kind of think that the uh, his cavalry use was neutralized by Llewellyn. So here we have most of the Boyai uh, running away from the engagement. Not much left for Panda now. And nothing much he can do here. The battle is just decisively against him. There is absolutely no way. He still has his general, but his general is going to get surrounded and 
summarily destroyed by Luelin. I'll just put this on fast forward because there is nothing Panda Warrior can do at this point. Uh, just, he has a decent amount of sword followers left, he actually has, and they have a lot of kills, massive kills on the sword followers. But the cavalry of uh, Luelin was just so important in, in destroying the engagements that Panda was doing okay in, and getting the rare charge bonuses in. The old stone general is going down, and that's GG. So, it will be very interesting to have a look at the kills here and see how the different units did. Now here you can see the awesome uh, offensive potential of sword followers. 102, 240, 178, and 143. For the tribals, we have 112, 145, 143, 183. So they are sort of evenly matched, but the Oath Sword, of course, the Oath Sword of, um, of Tylus, massive kills. Still, not much more than the Sword Followers. The Axe Warriors, I feel, were a key unit in this battle to Panda Warrior, and they weren't able to perform as well as they should against Tribal Warriors. I believe they were up against Celtic Warriors at some point. The Celtic Warriors did their job in going in and doing some damage, and no, no huge differences in the amount of kills they got from each of the player sides. Well, actually, these Celtic Warriors did extremely well, but they could have been matched up against the Levy Freeman and such. The Levy Freeman of uh, Panda Warrior were better <laughs> than the Levy Freeman of of uh, Luelin. But but just have a look at how effective the raiding horsemen were. Uh, the raiding horsemen that cost 490 uh, outperformed, almost outperformed the heavy horse and certainly outperformed the heavy horse uh, when matched for cost. So very, very nicely done. And I think what what dragged um, what, what what look at the builds two thousand one hundred and sixty man for each player. Panda Warrior had fourteen ninety five kills. Um, Luelin of Garta had seventeen eighty one kills. And I think the main difference made in this battle it was not in the sword department because if you compare the kill, kills on the swords here, they are not that much off from each other. Uh, I think for Panda. I might be wrong, but I think the main reason why this battle went the way it did was that uh, because of the raiding horse going in and finishing the engagements in the center, and by these three units of heavy horse, that is a massive, massive portion of Panda Warrior's army. They would have needed to, to negate charges, they would have needed to go for rare charges, but w only one of these heavy horse units was able to perform well. So thanks to Lulin for sending me this replay. Uh, just an awesome battle to watch. Um, this is one of those battles where I almost should have 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 paused the battle at several po several points and just play it, just uh, played it in slow motion when I did play it because there are so many small instances that you you can learn a ton from and I especially want to um, want to talk about the micro of Panda Warrior when he charges in a unit of sword followers gets the massive charge bonus the tribal warriors he knows the tribal warriors are going to hit shield wall they hit shield wall he pulls out the sword followers then he charges in with a fresh unit of Celtic warriors when the tribals hit shield wall and are not able to counter charge I mean it's just that type of infantry micro just shows that there is definitely some skill to using infantry correctly and he was doing well in the infantry engagements but things started to sort of fall apart when his cavalry was neutralized and that is a good argument for why why cavalry is still extremely important in this game although the meta is favors infantry to a heavy degree i mean here we have two armies that have 16 infantry units you can see that uh, bringing full stacks and bringing a lot of infantry is is uh, pretty important but still even when the infantry is fairly evenly matched the difference is going to be made in the cavalry department uh, especially with players of sort of equal skill and I think Llewellyn used his cavalry units to greater effect here and I also think that using his, um, his, his skirmisher cavalry it was more advantageous to go cheaper on the cavalry in this instance for Llewellyn because he went a lot cheaper on the cavalry than Panda Warrior. Uh, Llewellyn Let's if you we're just rounding, rounding up. Luelin spent less than two thousand on his uh, cavalry, while Panda Warrior he spent two thousand eight hundred on his uh, his cavalry, and that is an additional two units of Celtic Warriors or a sword follower, um, 
uh, or in the in the case of in the case of uh, Tylus, Tylus was able to bring an additional unit of Oath Sword, while the the amount of mid tier swords is identical. Uh, the amount of Celtic warriors is off by one. Uh, the Tylus was able to bring an additional spare warrior for their uh, funds. So. Um, yeah, there's just so much to talk about when, uh, because that that's what I I like and that's what I love about this game. Something that looks very superficial, something like two rush builds going up against each other. If you know what to look for, uh, it's to me it's like watching sports, like trying to figure out what they're thinking, why they're doing what they're doing, and there are so many layers to this game. So for someone who doesn't know the game very well, it might look like two. Uh, two just two mindless rushes going up against each other, but it is fooling yourself thinking that that is all that's happening. Even though there are two rushes on the field, you can have great matches like this, and that basically comes down to the awesome skill of both of these two players. And I'm I'm really happy that I got sent these replays because I just I think I learned quite a bit from from watching this, and most important of all, I had a lot of fun watching it, and I hope you did too. Strength and honor.